Now I think it's time for Top Gear to revolutionise motorsport. And we start, oddly enough, with the Renault Espace, one of the least sporty cars ever made. But it was one of the most important. Like the Ford Model T, the Espace was one of the great seismic shifts in the history of the car. Today, people carriers sell in their millions and they're slowly killing off the hatchback and the saloon. And in Europe, it all began 20 years ago with this car. The upholstery may have been ugly, the car may have been ugly, but its lack of boot and bonnet and its flexible seating was a complete revolution. And you can tell this car was a revolution. Because when it hit the showrooms in 1984, no one got it. At first, Renault were confident. In fact, one of the creators called the Espace the silk underpants car because he believed it would make everyone involved rich enough to afford posh undercrackers. But when the early sales figures came in, their underpants were, in fact, brown. Because in its first month, the Espace racked up worldwide sales of nine. That's it. Nine. But the rest is history, and today the world is full of people carriers, and this car is an icon. So, how do we celebrate it? Well, you can't say a car has ever really arrived until it gets its own classic racing series. There's the historic Ferrari Maserati Championship, and Aston Martin's got one, and Jaguar. They all do them. And so we come to the inaugural historic People Carrier Racing Championship um, race. We think this sport has great promise. It'll be cheap, exciting, and it's open to minicabbers and dads. Just look at the lineup. It should also be a good laugh, especially when you see what's taking part. As well as two espaces, we've got the Toyota Space Cruiser, a car once described by consumer experts as highly unstable. The Mitsubishi Space Wagon, the lowest car here, and that's got to be good for handling. And then we come to this, the Toyota Previa. Now, this one has an ace up its sleeve because it's mid-engined, just like a Ferrari. And finally, the Nissan Serena, for many years Britain's slowest accelerating car, with a 0-60 time of 28 agonising seconds. All of them picked up for a few hundred quid a piece. Now, we really do want to put this race series on the map, and to show we're not messing about, we've got some serious driving talent. Tim Harvey, former British touring car champion. Matt Neal, former independent British touring car champion. Anthony Reid, reigning independent touring car champion and race of champions champion. Rob Huff, Seat Cupra Championship champion. And Tom Chilton, who one day probably will be a champion. Champion! This is very, very exciting. I'm with some of the country's top racing drivers. I was in Silver Espace number one, but Rob Huff in the Diesel Serena went from a jugular right from the off. Oh, really a pretty brutal start. The racing rules were simple. 15 laps and no body contact. But touring car drivers always forget that last bit. Obviously, you do get a bit of lean in people carrier racing. As they go into the top turn, a bit of a four-wheel drift. I am getting understeer, if I'm honest. I'm being lent on heavily by the Toyota. The Serena now, just a great big lump. It's like a, somebody's left a barn on the track. How am I going to get around that thing? Like that. Pretty soon, both Espaces were fighting for the lead. I'm trying for third gear, that's cost me. Oh, that's cost me. 
me two places, that mistake. And Matt Neal's space cruiser was more like a space hopper. <laughs> to steer this fast, countering my terrible understeer problems. This is not obviously the usual way to drive an otherwise sensible family vehicle. Whoa, this is big! By now, it has to be said, there was a smattering of body contact. Yes! <laughs> but you always get teething problems in the early days of any historic race series. Bass made mincemeat of Tim Harvey's space wagon as we headed for the finish. This is the best form of racing ever devised. Now, it's a Spass on a Spass. We stayed at the front. It's second, first and second for the Spasses. What a great victory. What a great day. You see, they were a multi-purpose vehicle. And we tried pretty much everything with these things, carrying families, dogs, businesses use them, but there was one purpose we left unexplored until now. And I think we've started something brilliant here. Historic people carrier racing could be the way forwards. <laughs> Not with this one, though, obviously that's a bit spent. Oh, that's good yes. Well, can I just ask? Did yours have the V6 engine? Did you notice that? <laughs> My car was so much faster than ever. It was a bit embarrassing. It was, but I will say this. There was more action in that one race than a whole year of Formula One, I yes. would say, wouldn't you? And it was quite a lot cheaper. But, look, I don't want to get caught up because I really do think we are actually onto something here with historic people carrier racing. Mm. Now, I rang the BRDC, that's the British Racing Drivers Club, and they said, and I quote, it's mega. It that is. Nothing. I've got it all worked out. Uh, I'm going to do the TV rights and the tobacco sponsorship. You get a pudding basin haircut. Marry someone a lot taller than See where you, you are. Go. Yeah? We'll be super rich. And you will all have a great racing series to watch. Everybody wins.